you know, long hours, more prone to making mistakes, um, putting people in like uh, horrible conditions, dangerous conditions. They were not scabs. No, I don't, I don't think so. I think they're just like not union, but um, let's, let's, let's watch. Let's take a look at what's going on here. We begin with breaking news on a shooting in New Mexico involving actor Alec Baldwin. Sheriffs say that one person was killed and another was injured when Baldwin fired a prop gun on a movie set. He has not been charged with a crime. He was questioned after yesterday's shooting. Jesus Christ, bro. They're like, they're like taking photos of this dude. And then he was released. The movie cinematographer, 42-year-old Halina Hutchins, died in this incident. Director Joel Souza was treated at a hospital for unspecified injuries. Jonathan Bigliotti is following this story. Jonathan, we saw pictures of Alec Baldwin. He's very distraught, we hear. Good morning. And good morning to you. That's correct. A tragedy and still a mystery. According to Baldwin's spokesperson, the accident occurred when a prop gun with blanks misfired. Sheriffs confirmed the 63-year-old actor was the person who fired the gun. How a movie prop became a deadly weapon is still under investigation this morning. This is the set of the Western Rust Thursday afternoon. The scene of the incident marked off by police tape. By the way, the, the movie, from what I understand, is literally about an accidental shooting of a rancher. Alec Baldwin is not only the star, but also the movie's co-producer. That morning, he posted this now deleted Instagram photo of himself in costume with the caption, back to in person at the office. Just hours later, he was questioned by sheriffs after shooting a prop gun that injured the film's director, Joel Souza, and killed director of photography, Helena Hutchins. On Tuesday, Hutchins posted this video saying one of the perks of shooting a Western is you get to ride horses on your day off. Sheriffs say she was airlifted to a hospital where she was pronounced dead. Souza was also taken to a hospital. The circumstances of the incident are under investigation. According to movie set gun safety expert Larry Zanoff, a gun loaded with blanks has gunpowder, but should have no projectiles. Still, he says it's potentially dangerous to be within 20 feet of a prop gun when fired. Any of that smoke or powder or that muzzle flash that could affect anyone or anything, Again, we keep a standoff distance of 20 feet in order for there to be no effect on something that's in front of the This mother. happened to Bruce Lee, some Brandon Lee on the set of Crow as well, by the way. Like, this is not a new thing. This has happened in the past as well. The news of the tragic accident on the set of Alec Baldwin film Russ is Hollywood reeling, but it's not the first devastating accident on a film production. This exact same thing happened to Bruce Lee, some Brandon Lee on the set of Crow, where he was shot and killed by uh, a prop gun or, or i guess it's technically not a prop gun it's like a real gun but with blanks in it in 1993 actor brandon lee was killed on a movie set when he was shot with a gun supposedly loaded with blanks an autopsy later revealed he was shot by a bullet and in 1984 actor john eric hexham died after he fired a prop magnum 44 with blanks at his head in a mock game of Russian roulette. We're always concerned with safety on a television and uh, motion picture set, and that's why there's guidelines to follow. And detectives are now investigating how firing the prop gun resulted in death and injury, and they're continuing to interview witnesses. Production, meanwhile, on the film has been halted. Gail. What is this, props to history? The uh, IATSC Local 44, which is everyone, props to history. Uh, recently, uh, IATSC Local 44, which is uh, the union that oversees a lot of behind the scenes folks on the West Coast, um, confirmed that the accidental discharge of the firearm on the set of Rust in Santa Fe uh, involved the discharge of a single live cartridge. The types of firearms used. Isn't it because like sometimes they have like a dummy round or whatever and they forget to take it out like or they don't know that there's another round in there like there's a live round in there and they forget to take it out when they're putting the blanks in. Used in the filming of Rust because it is set in the Old West are what are called single action. Uh, they require a manual uh, mechanical operation to bring each round into firing position. 
much in the same way that a pump action shotgun requires the pumping action to bring a shotgun shell into battery for it to fire. Uh, the revolvers of that period uh, required the cocking of a hammer which rotated a cylinder which placed a round into firing position. Somehow a live cartridge ended up on set, a live full power cartridge. And uh, when the weapon was handed to Alec Baldwin, uh, it was loaded with a live round. How? Like, it has to be deliberate. Blank and real ammo look exactly the same. Typically, an armor is responsible for handling all firearms set, uh, on set so that there's no confusion as to who was handling the firearm. From what I understand, like, this is from Robert Evans. But uh, I, I saw last night that he was talking about how the armor is oftentimes responsible for accidents like this. Like the negligence comes from multiple uh, different uh, avenues, but certainly from the armor. The armor that they were using was non-unionized labor as well, but I don't know how, how that normally works. I don't know if they like actually blank versus live rounds. Oh, yeah. So it's still, this is the part that's like filled with, filled with gunpowder and this is the bullet, right? Like, this is the projectile that flies out when it gets hit in the back, I guess. Like, when it... And a blank does not have that projectile, so it still has that same pop, same kickback, but it just doesn't... There's no, there's no round that flies out of it and hits something. Blanks look very different than regular ammo. The bullet gets stuck in the barrel, then gun is loaded with blanks, but the force of the blank shoots the stuck bullet out like real. If the gun isn't cleaned properly and some dirt or rust gets in the barrel, it can get propelled by the blank and do damage. Now, this is rifle ammo. These are live rounds versus blank rounds on a rifle. They were using, I think, is, was it a revolver or was it a shotgun? Dirt doesn't kill. Well, you never know. It depends on what kind of projectiles are in there. It could still technically kill someone, uh, especially if fired at close range. And it, it just, it's all entirely dependent on like the circumstances. So you're not right about that either, but I work with props and firearms for 17 years. And the reason this situation sometimes happens is because what? Oh, come on, dude. Uh, just like, don't make jokes about that. Jesus Christ. I heard the blank was loaded on top of a piece of dummy round lodged in there. Dummy rounds are used for close-up shots of a gun loading. The dummy wasn't taken out properly. So it was just a horrific accident. Better image of a pistol ammo versus a blank. Anyway, um, let's. There are pictures from the set of the setup there with the camera where uh, the director and Ms. Hutchins, the director of photography, were standing and that there was a plexiglass shield there. That plexiglass shield is to protect them from the gases and bits of debris that are that come out of the uh, barrel of a gun when the discharge of a blank takes place. I'll be back. Those blank cartridges do give off heated gases and some bits of what's called wadding. Um, the live cartridge would have gone through that like it wasn't there. This is an unprecedented failure in procedure. I will not uh, associate blame to anybody at this time because it's not my place to do so. That will be up to the Sheriff's Department there in Santa Fe to determine that uh, after their investigation. So please uh, do your best to keep the uh, rumors and speculation to a minimum. This is... Um, This is an absolute tragedy uh, brought on by a culture within the film industry of overwork and um, cutting corners. The crew recently walked off set as a whole uh, because of 17 hour work days and the inability to even get hotels for people that were too tired to drive home from set. Alec Baldwin himself made a statement about how overworked the crew was. It's pure uh, in insanity that this happened. Uh, again, my condolences to the friends and family of Ms. Hutchins and uh, for a speedy recovery of Mr. Souza. Sorry, I'm getting, I'm cold in here. I had to turn down the AC a little bit and also put on a longer sleeve. Sorry. Uh, okay, so... CNN and prop masters explain how prop Police guns can be dangerous. After actor Alec Baldwin fired a prop gun that killed the cinematographer on his latest film. Uh, you see Baldwin here. Uh, he was outside the sheriff's office, um, as you can see, uh, understandably likely uh, shaken after the incident.
for sure. Investigators say Helena Hutchins was airlifted from the set of Rust, a Western being filmed near Santa Fe. She was pronounced dead at the hospital. The film's director, Joel Souza, also injured. Joining us now to discuss is Marcus Cooley. He's a prop master, production designer who's worked with weapons on movies such as Fast and Furious and Bad Boys. Uh, good to have you on. Uh, he, as we look at this, so many questions, Marcus, but, but, but a first one, so folks can understand, blank cartridges, the, the police statement says that there was a projectile that came out of this guy. Is that normal with the way blanks work? Uh, not in the sense of what we've seen happen here. Uh, there are particles of black powder that typically come out of the firearm once it's been discharged, but not in the sense of what seems to have occurred here. And how, what are some of the protocols on set in terms of how close people can be? I mean, these, these, are, these are props. You know, someone who's never spent time on a movie set, I have to mm -hmm. say, you think of a prop and you think, well, that can't be a real gun. It can't really harm anybody. And there are also, as I understand it, protocols in place in terms of distancing to make sure that nothing goes wrong. Um, can you walk us through what is, what is supposed to happen? Yeah, uh, the industry-wide labor management committee sets forth uh, actually safety bulletin number one for just about every uh, movie set. Uh, it's it's bulletin number one. There's very strict guidelines on the processes, what we're required to do to make sure these weapons are safe. And to be clear, anything that's called a prop weapon when we're talking about shooting is, is in fact, a real gun. Uh, there are some small modifications that have been made for them to be used on the movie sets, but they're still very real. Uh, so, you know, we have blanks that we use. Um, there are also dummy rounds, which are used uh, for when we would need to see somebody loading a weapon, um, but they have, they're have they inert, so they have no black powder in them. Uh, but the safety processes that go through that is typically uh, when we bring a weapon out, we have a big safety meeting with the first AD who's responsible for the safety and management of the set overall. Uh, we usually bring in special effects. We bring all the actors. Everyone inspects the gun, talks about exactly what's going to happen, where camera will be when this happens. Um, and we then present the weapon to the talent. We present the weapon to anyone who wants to inspect it. And that's generally to make sure that we see what exactly is going into that firearm. Uh, you know, and af after a certain amount of time, people do get comfortable on set. The talent trusts us. Uh, I've worked with really big name actors that after working so much, they, they trust what we're giving them has been cleared and it is safe. And we always do that with the first AD so they trust when we're handing it off. Uh, there's no reason for them to check. Uh, okay. However, we still go through that process with the first AD to ensure that there's nothing that shouldn't be in that weapon. Okay. I, I understand you're at a disadvantage there. All of us are, because we weren't on the set and there are many still, there's still many unanswered questions here. But based on your experience, I mean, one of the remarkable details here is that two people w were injured, okay. one killed and one hospitalized. Uh, can you imagine any circumstances with a, a, a prop weapon or a blank round wh where, where that could happen, where two people, right, could, could be injured or hit? Yeah, I mean, you know, there are injuries that do happen from, uh, you know, hot casings from guns when you're working with automatic weapons that come off and people get burned and can be hurt. But in the instance of what we've seen here, um, I, I don't see where this would be possible unless the camera was a foot away from the gun, which seems highly unlikely. You mentioned earlier there's uh, strict guidelines on distance and things like that. In particular circumstances, you don't want anyone closer than 20 feet from the point of the muzzle. Uh, you don't- Cause like even the gunpowder in the, in the range of 20 feet can like actually uh, harm you or even kill you, right? Like even if the blank fires as is in the way that it's supposed to, it can still f you up. Because, like, think about it, chat. I mean, no country for old men has the cow killing thing that's like, boom, it's like highly pressurized air, right? Or is it a nail gun? Whatever. Whatever it is, like, even highly pressurized air itself can just, like, literally f uh, open up a hole in your in your skull, depending on, like, no, it wasn't a nail gun. I thought it was an air gun. Whatever. It was a, the crew of this film had already, it's a piston. Oh, there's a bolt. Oh, okay. There's a spike in it. I did not know that. I thought there was a, I thought it was just, I thought that was just like an air gun or like, I mean, it's an air gun, but it's like, there's still a projectile that it, it's using. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Like it's just, that's compressed air can that has a metal rod. It shoots into the cow's head and then retracts it. Um, that's why they had a plexi shield. It's a close up shot towards the camera, but a bullet will blow through the plexi. Like it's nothing. I don't want to be completely straight on to camera. 
Uh, we always want to be off axis, so we're never yeah. pointing directly at the lens. Um, and in certain cases where we do, we do what's called a lock off, where the camera is set static. We remove mm. everyone away from the camera and they do everything wirelessly. So that if something were to happen or anything did come dislodged in the weapon, then nobody would be hurt. And this yeah. circumstance, it's it's speculation, but it you know, it, it's hard to say what exactly happened. Um, but in my experience, no, for two people to be injured in this way, mm -hmm. it, it draws a lot of uh, a lot of conclusions. I think before we've gotten all the facts, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's yeah. a tragedy. Yeah, certainly raises a, a number of additional questions. Um, the family yeah. of Brandon Lee, who of course. Um, died um, from a gun accident, noting this morning in their words, quote, no one should ever be killed by a gun on a film set, period. Were mm. there changes yeah. in the industry after mm. his death? Yeah, you know, I, Brandon Lee's situation was, you know, similar. It, it was the lack of awareness uh, and paying attention. I think that it, it certainly just like when Sarah Jones was tragically killed in an accident, it always brings awareness and, and, and more of a spotlight onto the industry on what safety measures are in place on, on film sets. Uh, firearm safety is number one. It always has been, like I mentioned before, it's uh, within our industry, we have an industry-wide uh, safety committee. Uh, it's bulletin number one, firearm safety. Um, situations like this should never, ever happen. Unfortunately, whether it's inexperience, uh, whether it's budgetary issues, whatever it is, um, it should never, ever have happened. Talk to us around the issues with prop guns. How do they work? How are they supposed to be kept safe? Good morning, John. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. Unfortunately, what happened was a tragedy. Um, in the film business, we take extreme caution with any kind of weapons, whether they be rubber prop guns, blank guns, and anything in between. Typically, we will do a safety brief with the cast and crew. We'll introduce the weapon to the cast and crew. We'll let them examine it. We'll explain the safety precautions that go with each type of prop weapon. In this case, it was a blank firing weapon. And Chet, he doesn't work in the film industry as a technical guy who knows how to work a camera, okay? He, he's just, at the end, he's just a boomer, okay? Chill out. Yeah, I, the, the, gra the graphics are bad. It's not great. Jesus Christ. And with that, there are inherent risk. We saw with the Brandon Lee shooting several years ago that prop weapons do have a dangerous factor to them, even though they're a lot safer than using a lot. Alec Baldwin getting involuntary manslaughter? No, absolutely not, dude. You're out of your mind if you think that. First of all, he's like straight up incredibly anti-gun. It's literally not his fault. It's more so the fault of like an armor or a person who was on uh, who a person who like did not do the proper uh, safety checks. And even then, it I think Alec Baldwin is regardless. Like, dude, you, you just murdered your director of cinematography. Like, that's <clears throat> it's like that that shit will that will break you. I suspect. But he was also a producer. As a producer of the film, he must hold some responsibility. Guys, uh, uh, having a producer credit on the movie that you're filming is entirely different than like a person who specializes on like the actual production side that is dedicated to making sure that there's safety checks on the gun. It's like point blank with and a blank gun is these. it dangerous? The very fast stream of gas it shoots out of the vent holes can generate contact pressures high enough to damage many soft materials, including of course the human body. So shooting the blank gun with any part of the body in close proximity to it can result in injuries that, in case of little distance between the vent holes and the body parts, can be very serious. Of course styrofoam is not the strongest material, but it clearly shows the path and shape of the vented jet. To show the effects against something a little more resistant, I got this expired juice brick and tested it against the blank pistol. The gas jet pierced it and blew it open spraying us with juice. No. Well, okay, I want to see what the blank looks there like when you very high it, pressure. the discharge. Oh, he's showing like the discharge alone can be... Uh, the discharge alone uh, could hurt people. There are two types of vents and this is a vertical vent. Some blank guns have a horizontal vent that acts more like a real gun. I firearm on set. 
Typical prop load will be about 25 to 50% of the gunpowder in an actual projectile load that would be used in a wet, regular weapon. With that in mind, that has to be safe. Listen, the only, the only way that uh, Alec Baldwin gets into trouble here is if he's like firing it willy nilly. You know what I mean? That's it. Like, if he was just like casually, you know, messing around with it or something. Safety precautions, there have to be safety distances. And at some point there was a mishap and those were not followed. What can come out of a blank gun? If a prop gun is supposed to only have blanks, how is it then that something could come out of it, a projectile? Anytime you're dealing with a gunpowder load, which is what's in a prop weapon that fires blanks, you're going to have gas, you're going to have heat, you're going to have air coming out of it. Even though there's no actual physical projectile mounted on the front of that weapon, on, on the cartridge, there is projectiles that do come out, the powder, the gas, and those can cause physical injury within 25 to 50 feet, depending on the load. Within 25 to 50 feet, that's actually some distance if you think of a film set and how close people could be behind the camera. Very true, and that's why we take extreme caution when we... This is behind the scenes showing uh, the... Uh, the camera operator and the prop gun. I'm having a hard time understanding how this accident still happens in 2021. It's so close with the. F how do you guys think films are made, bro? Of course it's close. How do you think they capture angles and shit like that? There was a guy who even killed himself with a blank. This right here isn't even bulletproof glass, by the way. That's just like plexiglass, which could easily get, uh, a bullet could easily pierce through. We're not all LA scum, my dude. Not everyone knows how films are made. LA scum? No, the barrier does not protect you in case of a real uh, a bullet. No, those are just like plexiglass shit for the most part. My man said L.A. scum. Movies are only made in L.A. And everyone that works on a movie is actually a mega wealthy uh, celebrity like Alec Baldwin. Famously. You know? Okay. Um, okay, so Alex has... Uh, Alex Press, who's been, uh, you know covering the Yahtzee strikes as a thread on the matter. Now, this is, again, I want to repeat, not confirmed. This is first and secondhand accounts of working conditions that led to the, uh, led, that led to Helena Hutchins' death are flying among the uh, Yahtzee people, but I haven't confirmed them. Anyone can actually speak to what happened. Feel free to DM or email me. If you're in here and you want to talk, Alex is a great person to talk to about this sort of stuff. Uh, I, I'm, I know LA times wrote about it as well, but we don't know yet. There needs to be confirmations. That's a major, major, major accusation. Okay. It's criminal hours before actor Alec Baldwin fatally shot a cinematographer on the New Mexico set of rust with a prop gun. The, um, half a dozen camera crews worked, walked off the set, uh, off the set to protest the working conditions. Camera operators and their assistants were frustrated by the conditions surrounding the low budget film, including complaints of long hours and pay according to three people familiar with the matter were not authorized to comment the camera crew showed up for work as expected at 6 30 a.m thursday and began gathering up the gear and personal belongings to leave one knowledgeable crew member told la times labor trouble had been brewing for days on the dusty set at the bonanza creek ranch near santa fe shooting began on october 6th and members of the production said they'd been promised <clears throat> the production would pay for their hotel rooms in santa fe cinematographer helena hutchins killed by a prop gun just as her career was taking off uh, Alec, uh, on a set of the Alec Bowman was going to be very famous, the director who worked with her said, but after filming began, the crews were told they instead would be required to make the 50 mile drive from Albuquerque each day, rather than stay overnight in nearby Santa Fe. Remember this directly is in line with demands that, uh, workers make. You're saying what? That's crazy. This is what I've told you guys a million times over. This is the type of shit that Hollywood big budget productions pull on a regular basis. Okay. You're working, you're working 14 hours a day. 
You're working 14 hours a day, sometimes 17 hours a day. Okay. And so, um, this is the type of shit they pull off regularly. Imagine like you're working 17 hours and then you have a one hour drive both ways on top of that. That's 19 hours. You have no time to sleep, no time to sleep whatsoever. It's just absolute garbage work conditions. Uh, the cinematographer who was accidentally killed, Helena Hutchins had been advocating for safer conditions for her team, said one crew member who was on the set as the camera crew. New members of the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees spent about an hour assembling their gear at the Bonanza Creek Ranch. Several non-union crew members showed up to replace them, the knowledgeable person said. A member of the producer's staff then ordered the union members to leave the set. She said if, it, if they didn't leave, the producers would call security to remove them. Corners were being cut, and they brought in non-union people so they could continue shooting, the knowledgeable person said. There were two misfires on the prop gun, and one the previous week, the person said, adding... There was a serious lack of safety meetings on this set. A representative for the production company did not immediately comment. The entire cast and crew had been absolutely devastated by today's tragedy. And we send our deepest condolences to Helena's family and loved ones. Shooting occurred about six hours after the union camera crew left. Baldwin, the film star who also served as a producer on the film, was apparently rehearsing a scene outside the church, according to two knowledgeable people. The scene involved a gunfight that began in the church, and then Baldwin's character was supposed to back out of the church According to the notes uh, obtained, the production notes obtained, um, the Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office said deputies were dispatched to the Bonanza Creek Ranch movie set where filming was underway for the Western Rust after calls to 911 at 1.50 p.m. Baldwin was starring in the movie in addition to serving as one of the producers. No charges have been filed, but sh the Sheriff's Office said witnesses continue to be interviewed by detectives. Baldwin said Friday he's fully cooperating with the police investigation into the incident. There are no words to convey my shock and sadness regarding the tragic accident that took the life of Helena Hutchins, a wife, mother, and deeply admired colleague of ours, Baldwin wrote on Friday in a series of tweets. Production has been halted. In an email to its members, Local 44 of Ayatse, uh, a union that represents the prop makers, said that uh, the shot that killed Hutchins and injured director Joel Souza on Thursday was a live single round. As many of us have already heard, there was an accidental weapon discharge in a production titled Rust being filmed in New Mexico, said the North Hollywood-based local. A live single round was accidentally fired on set by the principal actor hitting both the director of photography, uh, local 600 member Helena Hutchins, and director Joel D'Souza. Both were rushed to the hospital. A source close to the time said the union does not know what projectile was in a gun and clarified that live is an industry term that refers to a gun being loaded with some material, such as a blank, ready for filming. So... They, they don't, I, I don't think they mean like there was a real ammo in there. So that's the, that's the story thus far. Okay. And why wasn't the union standing up for them, for the company to pay the hotels? Do you know how much the influence unions have over this? Wait, what? Why wasn't the union standing up for them, for the company to pay for the hotels? Are you here? Have you been, are you aware of what's been going on for the past couple of weeks now? No, there are unions, except like, it, it doesn't work like that. You can't just. First of all, no matter what happens, the people at fault here wouldn't be the unions. The people at fault here would be the bosses, people that are in charge of like allocating resources to uh, workers having a, a, a shortened commute so they can actually get like two extra hours of sleep. That is insane to be like, oh, it must be the union's fault. Well, how about the First of all, the unions are the workers, okay? So the people that are making that demand is literally the workers. Anyway, that's not the question. The question was, how can the unions help with this? I mean, uh, in this situation, better workplace safety conditions. Um, I don't know what else, but quote cool from an NPR article on the frequency of prop gun deaths. An Associated Press report from 2016 determined that from 1990 until the time of publication, at least 43 people died on the sets in the United States and more than 150 had been left with life altering injuries from prop guns. What that does mean then is that the gun had blanks in it when it shouldn't have during re rehearsal safety failure. Yeah. Even when it's a safety failure, like dudes are working to the bone. Like that's again, negligence on behalf more so of the bosses rather than the workers in that situation. The worker is negligent for sure. But like if you're working 17 hours a day and then two hour commutes uh, and you're half falling asleep at 630 when you're supposed to be like looking at the live rounds, like I, I personally think the guy handling the guns should most likely or, or should definitely get enough sleep. You know what I mean? have like uh, some make sure that the mental uh, acuity is there to be able to uh, adequately deal with the with the uh, safety issues on set but maybe i'm just crazy
yeah there's already fake news running around uh probably so i don't want to i want to be as careful as possible it's very i mean but the part of the story that is actually directly tied back to the iatse conversation is that it's very related to what the crew members have been talking about during the iatse negotiations short turnaround times long days cost cutting on labor all lead to dangerous situations that's 100 percent true the iatse member just want to say thank you for covering all this we deserve better yeah like this is this is it's high profile but there's like low profile shit that goes on on a regular basis on these sets from just abuse to skipping lunch to literally car crashes that workers get into on their way back to a long ass commute 50 miles away just so they can fall asleep on their couch so you know this is this happens regularly in this grueling industry where you know you're being worked the bone um, and you're doing it because you, you got you got skin in the game. You love it. You want to make movies. This is your dream your entire life. And then all of a sudden, your dream is snuffed out right in front of your eyes. Like you just, you get killed by a prop gun on a set. It's so devastating. Why are we still using modified real guns as prop guns? Gunsmithing isn't some esoteric art. There are dozens of ways to custom build safe, non-firing firearms, including custom loads for blanks. Probably really expensive. Any chance a disgruntled Ayatse member ordered off set, tampered the prop gun? Dude, you are out of your mind, dude. That is an insane thing to... Yeah, dude, yeah. A an angry Ayatse worker killed another, a uh, another Ayatse worker. Like, that's how that works. Like, it trying so desperately to, like, bring this back to how the workers are at fault is insane to me. These people are friends with one another, dude. That's like, nuts. Ayatse Local 44 is the union for props in LA Hollywood area. One huge question everyone has, whether the people, props people working people were union or non-union. Also, I assume there was an armor on set. Yeah. Um... Part of the context of this tragedy is that it's very related to what uh, members have been talking about. On a day before the tragic shooting on the set of Russ movie, a crew member on the film commented on a pro Ayatsi Instagram video by actor, producer Alec Baldwin complaining about unsafe work hours. I'm literally on the show in New Mexico with him and the producers on that movie are treating the local crew like dog shit. Absolute dog shit. At the moment, I'm fighting to get my crew on this movie. Hotel rooms. Oh yeah, we, we already confirmed this with LA Times as well. Hotel rooms when we go long or too tired to drive an hour back from location to Albuquerque. To either say no or offer a garbage roadside motel that's used as a homeless shelter. In fact, the line producer on the flick complained the motel she booked charges her 10 bucks more per night than the homeless. They haven't even paid a crew a proper check. My B sec second had to sleep in his car. My, my B second had to sleep in his car on Sunday night because they won't give him a room and he was too tired to drive uh, an, the hour home. Nobody on, on any production should have to sleep in the cold in their car at base camp to not die driving home. Adrian already have called my BA and he's fully involved. The show keeps arguing they don't have to do anything because contract minimums don't force them to. In fact, in the low budget agreement, a hotel doesn't need to be provided until 14 worked hours. And this show's doing our lunches. So it requires a 15 hour elapsed day before they will volunteer a hotel. Remember, they will never do this unless you fight for it because they're, they will cut the costs in any capacity they can unless you literally fight for it. And that's the only way that you can do it through, you know, uh, filing grievances and like through, um, through a union. Anyway, SAG after has contracts to get them four star hotels, 20 minutes from set for productions. Alec Baldwin, are these still available? Asking for a movie producer. What? I'm going to make bright banana yellow t-shirts that read my hands are up. Please don't shoot me. Who wants one? Dude. So I saw all these old tweets. Like I saw them last night and at first I was going to meme about it, but then I was like, dude, someone can die, dude. Like. Like he's at fault for uh, the, the workplace uh, conditions, right? To a certain degree. I mean, I don't know what his level of involvement is considering he was a we producer on it. Um, but ultimately, like, is a production company not entitled to the sweat of their workers' brows? Oh my God, my least favorite uh, type of chatter. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>